right, YouTube, it is Mr. Mean coming at you this Tuesday evening about a little bit after 8. Uh, tonight's video du jour is a little bit different. It is going to be a review, but it's also going to be um, a little bit uh, of just my audio capture and me not doing registered. some babbling about a cool product that I have uh, and that I hopefully, by the end of this video, you will want to pick it up as well. Um, and then, of course, at the end of the video, we'll do our shout outs and everything that we, we normally do and tell you what's going on with the channel and all that fun stuff and social media and blah, 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 blah. So let's get into it. About two years ago, year and a half, two years ago, um, this guy from a company called Feral Games Inc. reached out to me because he had a game called Zombie Squad. And he had seen a couple of my reviews and saw that I was reviewing games that were not mainstream you know they were either old games or they were you know weird games that a lot of people hadn't hadn't heard of or just eclectic stuff that other people weren't necessarily playing it wasn't D, &D it wasn't pathfinder and even though i did some of those reviews as well for a certain product that caught my eye at the time you know um he reached out to me and said hey would you review my game i'm sending you a hard copy uh, if you if you'll give me your address and so I did and little did I know that you know a year later year and a half later however long it's been uh, it might even be going on two years I don't remember um, we've developed quite a friendship and I have supported his products I've supported I think almost every Kickstarter he's done I think I have all of his hardback or physically produced RPGs that he's he's uh, he's made and I think he's a prolific writer. I think he's uh, super cool in his thought process and his design. And uh, that's that's uh, Jay Gantry from Feral Games, Inc. Um, and he makes an awesome uh, game called Delve. And this is Delve 2nd Edition. Uh, uh, well, that's that's the, the expansion that we're going to talk about. This is actually Delve 2nd Edition, the RPG. Um, and you can get this through drive through RPG. Uh, be cool if you used my uh, affiliate link the audio down capture, in the doobly do down not below. Registered. But uh, this is a complete role playing game. This is all you need right here, um, and that's I'm I'm really a fan of that. I mean, obviously I love books and I love collecting them, but I like games that are are self contained. And um, delve is it's delve is very much self contained. And um, what's nice about delve is it's uh, it's quick, it's easy, it's a percentage based system you can whip up a character in literally 10 minutes. It is, you know, uh, minus the time it takes you to read the, the basic setup of the rules. There's quick play characters that you can create that are even faster. Um, but it's a great, um, I don't want to say beer and pretzel because I think it does lend, lend itself to a little bit deeper than uh, beer and pretzels. Um, it's kind of similar to Warhammer Fantasy roleplay in its darkness um, as well as its comedic flavor. Um, it it really does, and and I don't want to review Delve because I've already done that. You can go into the uh, into the archive there, and you can you can check out my review of Delve. Needless to say, it's a buy, and I enjoy it. And I also on the channel, um, not too long ago, maybe maybe four months ago, I actually ran a one shot for Jay and a couple of uh, of my my followers and Patreons on uh, on Discord and followers on Patreon. Um, and it was fun. It was a quick little adventure. You know, we, I think we played for like maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, and it was just to give everybody a taste. And the cool part was Jay had never played the game. So it was nice to get him in there. And it was great because I would ask him questions. And he's like, I don't know, mate, you're running, figure it out. <laughs> so it was, was kind of cool that, you know, he, he took that attitude that he wasn't so boyje about, you know, hey, it's my game, do it this way. He was totally cool, and uh, it was fun to run for him. I would love to run again. Uh, Delve is one of those uh, fantasy games that I would like to run a short campaign of because I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of a gonzo over the top in certain aspects, like treasure and loot, audio uh, magic. Capture. Everybody Not in the game registered. can cast magic, whether you're a, a bard, a, a wizard, uh, a thief, a fighter, you can cast magic. Uh, there's magic spells in the book for you. But Jay got such a good response from Delve that he did a companion, and it was only in PDF. And I would like to say that a lot of the uh, requests came from the, my Discord and my followers. Uh, so thank you to all you guys. And we really pushed Jay to, uh, you know, said, you know, we would love a Delve 2nd Edition companion to be a physical book. 
because at the time it was only a PDF. Um, and it was fine, but it was loose papers and you, you know how PDFs are. Um, and so lo and behold, some things came to fruition and he ran a quick like GoFundMe or whatever. I don't even remember exactly if it was a Kickstarter or it was something else. But then we got the Delve second edition companion expanded. So he took all of the uh, PDFs and everything that he had created over the, the last year or so, and he put it all into one book, hardback. Um, and, you know, we've, we've got this beautiful tome in front of us that is roughly 130 pages. Um, and it's, it's 130 pages of, of goodness. Um, and I told Jay um, I was going to do a review. I, I owed him a review. Um, unfortunately, uh, for his Ghost Ops game, uh, it's an incredible game. If you're into, you know, militaristic, you know, shooters uh, and espionage and, you know, third world, you know, politics uh, and, you know, modern warfare, it's a great game. Unfortunately, it hits a little too close to home for me. I do suffer from a tad bit of PTSD and certain things trigger that. And video games, I don't play any like modern uh, warfare type video games. Uh, Borderlands is about as deep as I get. Uh, Outriders, SWB again, it's audio capture, not registered. It doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. But um, needless to say, above and beyond all that, that's not the point of the video. Um, I did back the Kickstarter. I am getting a copy of the book, but uh, it's not one that I, I won't be able to give it an honest review. So um, I'll leave that to other people to do. And, and, and maybe um, uh, the Batman on, on my Discord, if he watches this, he'll pick up the mantle and do a review because I know he's getting ready to fire up his channel again. Or maybe uh, Angel, Angel Citadel will do it and uh, give him a fair shot, which I hope they do. But I did back the Kickstarter, and I'm, and I'm proud to say that I did. But... Um, I backed this on Delve because I wanted to see it in hardback and I wanted all the glorious gloriousness of all the expansions that he put out and, and the supplemental PDFs that he put out to, to come to this. Uh, and he put them all, he combined them all together into one hardback book. There's a character sheet in here. It's, it's, I think it's the newer version of the character sheet than what's in the, in the core rulebook, second edition. It may even be the same. I'm not quite sure. Uh, what I'll tell you is buy it and compare them and let me know because I, I want I want you to buy the book. I want you to support an indie designer. I want you to support a great guy that makes cool games, is very responsive. He's on my Discord. He has his own Discord, so make sure you go check it out. Um, but this is um, this is everything you could want from a companion and more. More, and you say, Mr. Mean, what do you mean more? Well... More random tables, more rules options, more character classes, uh, more char char character races. You can play a goblin, you can play a gnome. You uh, races, you've got uh, takes on the warrior and uh, takes on a, uh, you know the cleric. You've got new gear, you've got new spells. All the races get a couple of extra spells because, like I said in in the in the beginning. Everybody gets magic. Everybody can cast magic in some way, shape, or form. So obviously your mages are going to be better at it. Your witches are going to be better at it than, audio you know, say, your fighter or not your rogue. Registered. But they get those fighter and rogues and bards and clerics get specific spells that are tailored to them. Like the fighter can sheath his sword and fire, you know, and at a, as a early, I think it's a second level spell. It only does 1d6 extra damage, but like at the... Uh, at the uh, at the at the higher levels, uh, it does like two d six, so it's it's pretty awesome. And there's rogue spells, and like I said, there's warrior spells, and then there's new there's new adversaries, and in, in uh, I don't want to say NPCs, but they're more they're more like monsters. And there's a new uh, treasure table and a new monster table. This game uses heavy use of treasure tables. Like one of the first things you do when you make a character is you wake up on a beach. That's the premise of the game. Uh, and you have to roll a D100 three times to see what's in your pocket. And you can get everything from a magical ring to a piece of lint. You know, it's, it's a ball of string, you know. But again, those things could come in handy depending on the situation you're in. So don't, don't, I guess, don't be upset if you get a ball of lint. Because, hey, lint burns. You could start a fire with lint. And that may be the difference between, you know, surviving the night or, or suffering in cold, or so to speak. So, new monsters, uh, new new areas to explore. Uh, and then what he did is he also included uh, some of the adventures that he did 
uh, as like standalone expansions to the game, uh, which are super cool. But before we dive into that, one of the other things I want to point out is that the art in this game is uh, art is very expensive, especially for small time publishers uh, and indie publishers. And so finding good art is, I mean, it sometimes can be harder than actually making the game. Uh, and Jay and I have talked exclusively about this. And of course, you go to Kickstarter, and that's one of the, the major things that the money that is funded via Kickstarter goes to is not only the printing cost, SWB which audio are pretty capture, substantial, but also the registered. art cost. I would say, I would dare, I would say that the art cost, aside from paying writers, if you're not writing the game yourself, is probably your number one production expense next to the actual physical publication of your book. In other words, sending it off to a publisher to have it printed and the process that's entailed there because that's a painful process in and of itself. Everyone thinks, you know, hey, I paid my Kickstarter money. Where's my damn book? It doesn't always work that way. Um, you know, there's revisions. There's proofs that have to be approved. A proof is what the printer sends you back to uh, see if you know your layout and everything looks the way you want it to look before you send them a very large check to print you know 5,000, 2,000, 10,000 copies of whatever you want. Companies like Watsi and Paizo have full-time production people that that's all they do is they look at the proofs and they you know they they adjust the layout and you know the Photoshop and InDesign and all these programs that are not necessarily easy to use. One of the neat things I'll say is Jay kind of taught himself in design, and uh, I think he's gotten it down to a, a, a fine tee. I think his books, all of his books, look great. Um, I, I haven't had a problem with any of his books, um, but uh, some of the art he's got, like this, is the uh, the golem, you know, which looks like a dwarf, and then the uh, the cyclops, you know, look really cool. Um, you know, the wild boar and the brigand, you know, with a hook in his hand. You know, it's just cool art that really sets the feel of the game. And I and I really, it, it, it really helps me as a GM uh, storytell and give you a feel for the world when I can describe these monsters and these things uh, in, in detail. And you can see uh, the design process. Like, here's a, here's a rat ogre. I mean, that's just awesome. You know, you have you don't see that anywhere else. So um, he do, has used some domain SWP free art, audio uh, capture, but for the most part, uh, his art is unique and uh, it's very, it's very appropriate for for what he is is trying to convey. Um, so the second half of the book is um, some of the adventures that he's written for Delve and just thrown them in here. So like we have the Dungeon of Garrick Everdead or Gark the Everdead which is a pretty lengthy adventure um, and super cool. Um, I won't ruin it, I won't show any pictures. And then we have the Lost Tower of the Unholy Shroud, which is also another very cool adventure. Then we have, I think my favorite one in the book is the Hunt for the Many-Eyed God. I'm not gonna give any spo spoilers, but that's, that's my favorite, um, just because I like the ending of it and, and what happens. And, of course, with all of these, there's some rolls on the loot table, you know, the treasure table. So your players are going to walk away with some tangible rewards, which is always nice. Uh, and then we have Ruins of Windtorn Manor, uh, which is a, a very cool adventure. Uh, lots of charts to roll on, a lot of, lot of you know, traps and treasure and found things, encounters, and oddities. It's super cool. It's very well done, in, in my opinion. I think it's the biggest adventure in this book. Um, it's it's pretty beefy, and it comes with all the maps you need and everything. So that would be one that I would probably, I would probably go on drive through, uh, and I would buy the PDF just so that I could print these pages out and not have to you know bend my book and put it on a photocopier or whatever. I think it would just be a little more. Uh, conducive uh, to uh, to do it that way. Um, so in that case, you know, you're kind of buying the product twice. I get it, but you know, it's that's kind of kind of what happens sometimes when you want you want quality qu quantity or quality over quantity. Uh, and then we have March of the Dead, a tale of SWB horror. For audio this is this is not his Halloween adventure, and I don't want to. I don't want to show any of the art because unfortunately it's going to kind of it can kind of spoil the adventure but there's all kinds of tables in here i mean jay does a great job of these tables that are so appropriate for the 
the theme and the genre of the adventure that he's trying to, you know, that he's put together for you, for your players to, to enjoy, or if you're a player for you to enjoy. Um, so again, fully detailed with maps and, and, you know, everything that you need. Um, and I like, cause at the end he says, have a happy Halloween feral games, Inc., which I thought was kind of cool. And again, these are all available as PDFs you could buy individually, but if you buy the Delve companion, you get them all wrapped in one as a hardback. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the orcs are Re restless is another adventure. And I think that's the last adventure. Yeah. That's the last adventure. And then, of course, there's a character sheet. So, in a nutshell, this is awesome. You can buy it as a PDF. I'm pretty sure you can get it as a hardback off of Drive Through RPG. Don't quote me, though, because I'm not sure if this was released just to, like, Kickstarters or Backer It or GoFundMe or whatever it was that Jay did. I don't remember. Um, so, I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me. But I, I believe... I know, you can, I know for a fact, because I own them all, I bought them all, you can buy all of the companion stuff and the adventures off a of drive through RPG separately. Um, and I think he may have even condensed it into one pack. So the bottom line is go on drive through RPG and, and look for Feral Games Inc. and look for Delve Second Edition, uh, the companion expanded, because that's the key part there, the expanded, which is this book. So super cool, lots of neat stuff in here, lots of variations that literally add tons of depth to the core book um, which again you can also buy off a drive through and you can get it either as a PDF or you can get it as a print on demand which is what I did um, and I couldn't be happier SWB so go back audio and check capture, out my review not of registered. Uh, it, it goes hand in hand with this and I'm, I'm very proud to say that I have these two books on my gaming shelf and they, they will go into the the uh, the uh, the the tower of of doom uh and i am i'm most excited so that's pretty much ends up my review of delve uh the companion extended um obviously it's a buy in my book go out support an indie and if you don't even want to buy something from feral games inc one of the other ones uh, zadmar games they make really cool stuff for their own tricube tales which is his own system that uh that uh he's uh zadmar's created um, there's a number of there's a wealth of indie publishers out there. Go check them out. You know, throw a couple of bucks their way. You know, the the D and D books are always going to be there. You can always go back and buy them. You know, uh, send you know instead of spending that fifty bucks on a on a Paizo book or or a, a Watsi book, maybe split some of that fifty bucks up between two or three of the smaller indie publishers and and show them some love because. Without guys like us, they don't exist. I mean, you know, Watsi's not going anywhere. They're not going to fold anytime soon. Paizo's not going to fold anytime soon. Um, Modifius isn't going anywhere. Those cool games are going to be around for quite a while. But these indie publishers, you know, they, they, they may not. So if you see something that sparks your interest, man, pull the trigger and put a penny, you know, a couple pennies in their pocket and buy it. It really helps them out. And you're putting food on their table. You know, so um, that's always, always a good thing. But uh, so it's a part of the video where I beg you for subscriptions and I beg you for, uh, for, you know, to support the channel in the chosen manner that you want. I have a multitude of ways for you to help support the channel. First and foremost is like and subscribe. Share the channel with your friends. If, if you get some enjoyment out of my reviews and they make sense to you. Uh, and you've bought anything on my recommendation and you went, damn, Mr. Mean was right. You know, that that's a win in my book right there. SWB um, audio capture. But, you know, registered. the flip side is um, money always helps. <laughs> Never going to lie. Uh, it helps support Feed the Beast. Uh, it allows me to buy uh, better equipment. It allows me to uh, put food on my table for my kid, you know, which is always a good thing. So you can support me through Patreon. It's real simple. I have a $5 a month scheme. I don't have any tiers. Uh when I when I reach a certain number of Patreons, I'm going to open up the shop. Uh, Patreon has the ability for you to, to get merchandise with your logo on it. So eventually you'll be able to buy a shirt with the Mr. Meme logo that you see on my YouTube channel or a coffee mug or a dice bag or something like that, which would be really cool. And I would love to see that at a convention. You know, that would be super cool to see somebody walking around with a Mr. Meme t-shirt or Mr. Meme Speaks uh, t-shirt with my channel logo on it would be just super cool in my book um uh so there's patreon that uh, your five dollars a month gets you access to uh a designator on discord so everyone knows that you're a patreon subscriber uh and then also 
Uh, I do random giveaways every so often. A couple of my Patreons have received product from me when designers and publishers send me extra copies or send me free free copies of stuff that I may already own because I've purchased it on my own or they've just sent me extra copies. I always do a raffle of the extra stuff and I give it to one of my Patreons. So that gets you that. And then also, as a tertiary uh, uh, freebie, you get first dibs on any games that I run. When I usually run through Foundry, VTT, and my Discord. So you get the option to, uh, you'll, you'll get a, a, a request to play in one of those games. Or if I do a, 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 any show that has audience participation like that game, uh, once a month I try to do uh, highlight a game that has meant something to me or has given me you know, inspiration in some way, shape, or form or just m means something to me, I get two or three other guests on there and I give all my Patreons a shout out first to, to do that. Um, Cosmic Flux is one SWB of my long-time Patreon subscribers. Not and registered. He, uh, he's been on the channel and on the show a couple of times. So go in the archives and check it out. I am going to create a separate tag, I guess, or, or not a separate channel, but a, a sec separate video uh category called that game and i'm going to see if youtube will allow me to move those previous versions into that channel so to speak I, I i'm hoping i can maybe i can go in and give them a tag or something like that or rename them I, i'm not quite sure or relist them to a new a new sub channel uh called that game so it'll still be mr mean speaks it'll just be a separate like channel that'll have all of those that games in there where we talk about video games so Patreon, of course, PayPal, pay me forward slash John Polak, P O L A C K. You can send a one time donation there if you just, you know, you liked whatever you saw. Uh, some of my newer v videos are being um, created with a tip bucket in there. So you can, you can click the little thing and you can send me a tip that way. Uh, of course, the company that does that, I think they take a cut of it as well. So, it, but it's, it, it doesn't matter. You're helping the channel and I appreciate it. And it's, it's your, it's your hard-earned money, and you know, how you choose to spend it is how you choose to spend it. So either way you choose to do it, I say thank you, and and you know thank you so much for the support. Um, there's also Zelly Pay. You can uh, you can it's banked into if you're a U.S. banker uh, and you have a smartphone, it's baked into your banking application nine out of ten times. You just have to create an account, which is free. Zelly Pay is cool because they don't charge any fees. Um, so you're basically just sending a direct payment from your bank account to me. Uh, and it goes right to my bank account, and so it's pretty cool. It's Zelly Pay, and it's uh, you just send it to to John Polak, P O L A E C K. Uh, and the other uh, option is PayPal. I, I think I already said that. PayPal Pay Me. Uh, you can do that, and uh, all the links will be down in the doobly doo. Uh, and then of course uh, there is SWB audio really, capture. You know, and not I'm on Mewe. That's my social media of choice. I don't do Twitter. I don't do Facebook. Uh, I don't. I haven't done Twitch just because I haven't taken the dive yet, um, and I'm not even sure I will. I was going to, and then it turned out to be it's a little more work to put in, and I don't know. It's just I, I got a bad vibe from it, so I'm not quite sure I'll make it on the Twitch. YouTube seems to be doing me fine. We are trying to get to a thousand subscribers in 2021. We are at, and I will tell you right now, we are at. Let me uh, get to my main page here. We are at 881 subscribers as of right now. So thank you to everyone who has uh, subscribed. Uh, it does mean a lot. And so I want to say thank you. I also want to uh, give uh, a shout out to a couple of the, the newer subscribers on the channel. It's been a few weeks since I've done that. So bear with me one second as I scroll down here and I get all of the uh, subscribers because uh, unfortunately YouTube doesn't put it in a format that makes it easy to figure out uh, so we're going to start here three weeks ago uh, so this is a shout out to all the new subscribers that have joined the channel recently in the last three weeks so uh, it Ty Perez Andrew Sullivan thank you guys so much for supporting the channel liking and subscribing uh, and then we have to scroll up here uh, go a little further here. I'm sorry, they don't put it in any. So Lance Case, thank you so much for subscribing. He subscribed about a week ago, and I don't believe I gave him a shout out. Uh, Star Wars stuff, new subscriber, great name by the way. Star Wars stuff. Joey Lot, thank you for subscribing. Uh, 
Let's see who else here. Uh, Brian C. Thank you so much for subscribing. Aaron, SW another new audio subscriber. Uh, and registered. Brett Jordan uh, subscribed 53 minutes ago. So Brett, thank you so much, and a thank you to all the other guys. Brian, Aaron, uh, Star Wars. You know, thank you guys so much for subscribing. It means a lot to the channel. It really helps out the channel. Uh, and if we hit that thousand subscribers, um, it allows YouTube to make me monetize. And then it. You know, it's not going to mean like uh, I can quit my day job, but it, it it will allow a little bit of revenue to come in my way, and so that is is kind of cool uh, if that can happen. Um, and it also opens up some different things for the channel, like I can post directly from my phone, uh, uh, like on the go post. So like if I'm coming from the game store and I just bought something cool, I could do a real quick video and stuff like that. So and I can post videos from my phone or my iPad because I have a really nice iPad uh, iPad Pro the brand the 20, 2021 version of iPad Pro um, and I use it for video stuff and RPG stuff so that's pretty much uh, everything I wanted to say I wanted to give a shout out to those new subscribers you know as always like and subscribe uh, we're running uh let's see what am i i'm running pathfinder right now um that's a closed game to my home campaign uh we're gonna take it offline pretty soon and go back to playing here in the house most of i think all of us have had our or had our covid shot so i get my second shot on friday so that's going to help out a lot and i think the state of minnesota is hopefully going to be relaxing the uh the very strict requirements that they have right now for mask and everything like that and so i think all of my players feel pretty confident about coming back and gaming at the house because it's just a different experience and it's a lot of fun if you've played uh tabletop games around the table with your friends it is a totally different experience than using a virtual tabletop and while i do enjoy my foundry um i've come to enjoy running games on foundry a lot it still doesn't compare SWB to sitting around audio the table capture, with your friends. Not registered. Uh, you know, although my online friends are my friends as well, it's just nice to have a group of people sitting around the table and being able to play with them. So uh, looking forward to getting that happening again. Uh, I, I just got finished running uh, Low Fantasy 2090, or I'm sorry, Low Life 2090 from uh, uh, Pick, Pick Pocket Press. Uh, Steve over at uh, Pickpocket Press has been super nice. He's very active on his Discord as well as mine. Uh, and it's it's a cool game. If you're a cyberpunk fan and or a Shadowrun fan uh, and you wish that the rules mechanics for Shadowrun weren't so abysmal, go check out Low Life 2090. Uh, when I get the physical book, I will most assuredly do a video review of it because um, he's another indie press. He also does low fantasy gaming, which is a really good fantasy game as well so definitely uh check those out if you if you get a chance uh i'm hoping to get versus the dark master to the table soon with my friday night group once we uh once we get back to gaming in person and we have a session where everybody can't make it or something like that we we usually try to run an off game uh and i try to expose them because most of them are new players and haven't played before i try to expose them to a new game that they perhaps have never seen and or uh, tried like they all loved Mutant Chronicles. They thought Mutant Chronicles was the shiznat, and it's one of my favorite all-time favorite games as well. So, um, guys, that's really about it. I wanted to get a video out. It's been a week, a little bit over a week, I think. Um, and so I wanted to uh, get it. I have, I, I still have Steve Beatty coming on the channel. We did record a video, but unfortunately, the audio was so bad that I I couldn't use it. Um, I think I've got all those bugs worked out now. Uh, I've since bought a new Mac. I got an M1 Mac Mini, and I'm loving it. Uh, and it's working really great. That's what I'm recording this video on right now with OBS. SWB uh, audio capture great. not so, registered. Um, I just wanted to uh, whip out a video real quick and uh, give a shout out to Jay at Feral Games Inc. because the uh, extended companion or the companion expanded is amazing i'm so happy to have a physical copy in my collection uh and it's just it makes it uh, this game just even so much better so definitely pick that up if you get a chance much love to you jay and your family uh thank you for producing great games and uh anytime mr mean can help you all you got to do is reach out to the rest of you in there in, in the youtube lands uh, peace and hair grease as always. And remember, Mr. Mean says, be nice.